Hi everyone, my name is Lydia Harris and today I will be talking to you about rural community service and how to make projects successful for your club. A few key points we're going to go over today is knowing your area, knowing your club, know that you can build partnerships, know your success barriers, and then know how to make your project sustainable. So let's get into it. A big part of making a good project is researching your area and knowing um, some things about it before you get started. So you want to know who are the predominant populations? Are there a lot of elderly people? Is it a college town full of college students? Is it a farming or um, seasonal worker community? Are a lot of people there for certain parts of the year and then they leave and come back? Who are, what are the needs of this area? So looking at the environmental needs, the health needs. Um, is it hard to get access to health care there? Is there poor access to healthy foods there? Are you living in a food desert? What are the education and literacy needs? Are there after school programs for the students? Are there programs in school like art and music? Different things like that. A really good way to gauge this is by using Rotary's areas of focus as a guide. So just Write out the areas of focus and make a list of the things in your community that might be going well, as well as things that they could use in the community that fit into those areas of focus. And then looking at what programs are already in place. So if, they're, if you're thinking of an idea, but your community already has it, maybe see how you can make it better or see different things that might need your help instead. Another really great thing that I suggest before doing any projects, no matter if you're in a rural club, an urban club, a community club, a college club, any kind of club, is determining your club's interests. So I always like to pull the club members on what they enjoy doing. So if they're really into helping kids or really into the environment, you want to know those things so you can make really successful projects. Do the members have any connections to organizations? Are there teachers in the club? Are there musicians in the club? Are there um, different types of majors if it's a college club? Different things like that. Do people work for local businesses or own a business that might wanna help support a club? These are all really good things to know before you get started. It's because excited members and motivated members are more likely to participate. I know if I'm not interested in something, I'm not going to want to do it. So just making sure your members are excited, that will make them more engaged and will have better turnout to your events, as well as your club and just helping it grow. And then matching the interest to the needs of the community. So you know what your community needs, you know what your members like, do these overlap. Does the community need help cleaning up the parks or the environment? Does your club member enjoy cleaning up the environment and working with things like that? These are just things you need to figure out so that you can make it as successful as possible. So everyone always has issues with what kind of projects can they do. Especially in a rural community, it can be kind of hard um, because they just don't seem as obvious. You know, everything is more spread out. There's not big cities and buildings around where like obviously oh I need to go and clean up this area over here or we need to go and work at this homeless shelter over here. So just coming up with project ideas can seem daunting. Um, I've given you a few examples here. So a community garden can be a really great one that can get people outside. It can get your members involved. It gets the community involved, especially if um, grocery stores aren't nearby. So if you're gonna have to travel for 30 minutes to get to a grocery store, or could you have a community garden that's 10 minutes away from someone's house that they could go to to get fruits and vegetables and things like that. Also to help get them outside, learn a new skill, maybe engage with their neighbors. And delivering food and Meals on Wheels are great programs, um, especially for elderly that can't get out of their houses. This could be tricky though, if they live far away and your members have time constraints during the day or transportation is an issue, but it's always a great thing to look into. After school activities. So a lot of people complain that there's nothing to do in a rural area. So giving the kids something to do after school, that could be something that's hosted at their school. You could also make it virtual, especially post COVID, lots of schools have set up access for kids to have a computer at home. So you could get on Zoom and have everyone 
read a book together or do a talent show or a scavenger hunt where you say, hey, everybody hold up this, and then they would have that item to hold up. So there's a lot of way to keep students engaged and active after school. Another good one is activities in a nursing home. I know people there can get easily tired of doing the same things every day and it can seem like a really monotonous thing. So having your club members go in and host a bingo night or doing dance or aerobic activities. Crafting and cooking can also be fun ways to get the residents of that nursing home engaged as well as your members. So these are definitely not all of the ideas out there. Um, just a few points to get you started and kind of thinking about what you could adapt to fit your community. So developing partnerships is gonna be a huge part of making your project successful. So most likely there is a Rotary Club in your area. There is possibly more than one. So I would definitely start by reaching out to them and seeing how you can get involved. Interact Club is also a great thing to do, especially if you determine that your club members really enjoy working with kids. The Interact in the high school could be a really good way to get your foot in the door. I know it might seem shocking, but small communities can have a lot of nonprofit organizations. You would be surprised at the number that they can have. So just reaching out to those and seeing what they have going on, what you can help them do. Campus groups, especially if you're a university club, or if you just have a community college or university in your area, reach out to them. The Greek Life, Frats and Sororities can be a great resource as well as other groups on campus. And then local businesses, um, they can be a great resource, especially if you need somewhere to advertise. You could put up flyers in their business. They might be able to donate food or time or space. So just knowing them, they could also be a great resource for future members. They see you out in the community helping make things better. They might say, hey, I wanna join, or I know some people that might wanna join your club. That can also be great. So more into partnerships. So these can really help you get input on what the community needs. So these are the people that live there, they work there, they lead there. So just reach out to them and say, what do we need to do? How can we make things better? Do the Rotary Clubs or the non rock or the nonprofit clubs in the area need help with their projects. If they already have projects started, it's better to join in on them than to have to do all the work to start it from scratch. So just say, hey, what do you have going on and how can we help? And this shouldn't be a thing where you just show up and volunteer. You should actively engage your club members to be a part of the planning process. So going to the club meetings or to the nonprofits and trying to get members in at the ground floor to help plan the events as well as show up to them is a really great way to build your partnership. And then perhaps in the future, these clubs and groups would help your club with things that you wanted to accomplish. And then asking them, do they know the projects that get less attention? For example, if there's one homeless shelter in the area and there's eight different service groups that are trying to volunteer there, you might wanna look into other opportunities. Maybe there's an animal shelter or a women's shelter or a park that needs attention or different things around town that might not be getting the attention they need because no one knows about it. It might not be as obvious as, hey, let's just go volunteer at the homeless shelter, which is great, I'm not devaluing that but just know that there are likely other things that might need some help and that your partnerships could know about and help you decide maybe our resources will be better spent on this project versus this one that's already getting a lot of attention. So some barriers to success to um, think about, these will definitely be different for each club. Each club is gonna have different circumstances and barriers to overcome, but these are a few common ones that I found. So one big one is transportation. So do members have to travel to get to your event? And would community members have to travel to reach you? So I know one big issue with rural clubs is it's typically spread over a great distance. And so that will likely involve some travel. I know for me as a university student, when I was in the university club, travel was an issue for some of our members. For example, I was a mentor to a little girl. And so every week when I would go and see her, I would have to get out of class and then I would go to the bus stop and I would wait for the bus to come. And then I would drive right on the bus to my off campus parking spot and get my car and then drive the 25 minutes to her house. And we would do our activities and hang out and it was great. But then I would have to drive my car all the way back to the parking lot 
and then wait for the bus again to take me back to campus. And that just isn't sustainable for all of the members. So figuring out, do students have cars to get to activities? Are there buses there that you could ride? Should you set up a carpool? And this definitely applies to non-university clubs as well. When I volunteered at a free clinic in a rural town, one of the biggest issues they said they had was for patient cancellation on appointments. And so the patients didn't have transportation to get to their appointments, so they would cancel, therefore losing out on that health care that they needed. So just think when you're planning an activity, do we have a way to get our members there? Do we have a way to get the community members there? Another big barrier is location. So is this somewhere that's available and, e and easily accessible for our event? So is it out in the middle of nowhere? Is it in some obscure building on campus that you're gonna have trouble finding parking because campus parking is tricky and limited and you have to pay for it? Um, is there just no parking? at this event, um, can people find it? Is it up on the top of a mountain? And if it's snowy, you're not gonna be able to get there. So just keep all of these things in mind. I know they seem pretty simple and commonsensical, but they can really make or break the turnout that you get at your event. And another big barrier that people have is thinking inside the box. So the needs in the community may not be obviously be obvious at first, especially if there's a small population or it's spread out. So don't be afraid to get creative. You've done all this research, you know what the community needs, you know what your club is interested in. Use this to apply it to a project that um, could be sustainable and successful. And it might not be as obvious as, oh, hey, let's go clean up this river. You might have to put some work into it and figuring it out. So don't be afraid to think outside the box or do something that might seem kind of wild or unexpected because it could turn out to be a really great event. And so um, another important piece is to make your event sustainable. So you've done all of this work. And so after the event or the project, you should have a debriefing session. And this could be with your club as a whole. It could be with your advisor, if you have a club advisor for your Rotorac club. It could be with your board of directors or officers that you have. So you just need to discuss the event. The event. So determining what went really well, what was really successful about your project, what didn't go so well? Were there communication issues? Was it hard to find the event? Did weather factor into it and that put a damper on your event? And so then how can you make it better? So looking at what didn't work well, well, how could we change this for next year or next week if we do it again that soon? Um, what did work really well and how can we make that even better? There's always ways to improve your projects. And then simply, would we do this project again? Was there poor turnout? Was there great turnout? Did our members really like it? Did they not think it was as good as it could have been? Do you think this project is worth your time? You're spending so much time planning and getting together resources for these events. Was it worth it? Would you do it again? Or could your resources and time be better spent on a different project? Keeping detailed records to pass on is hugely important, especially in university-based clubs that have a lot of turnover. So just keeping track of who do you contact? What were we doing? When did we do it? Where did we do it? All of the little details that seem so tricky to get at the beginning, you don't wanna have to get them again every year. So just keep track of all of that. So when you have new officers coming in or new leadership, or your officers leave to go move somewhere else because they got a great job or they graduated school or whatever, you know what you're doing. You worked really hard to get the projects that you made to build the connections and the partnerships. You don't want them to get lost when you're gone. And so I have added a list of resources here especially good for finding projects in your community. So, I mean, a simple Google search does actually work really well. You could just type volunteer opportunities in X location and you get a lot of great resources, but these are some great free options. So volunteermatch.org, United Way is always a great resource, all for good, idealist.org and greatnonprofits.org. I would also recommend going on the Rotary website and doing a search for Rotary clubs in your area if you're not familiar with those. Also looking into the Interact clubs in the area or the other Rotaract clubs in your area. So just spend a little time figuring out what's out there and how you can get involved.
So I know we covered a lot today and I have this summary slide here just to put everything together. So know your area. Have you found the target audiences that could use the most support? If you wanna work with kids, does your community have kids or is it mainly an elderly community or a seasonal worker community or a college town? Knowing the target areas is a really great thing to help you know who you can work with and what kind of projects you can do. Do you know your club? Do you know the types of events that will actively engage and excite your members? Do you know what they wanna go do? If they're really involved in the environment and wanna work with that, do you have activities like that or are they all based on something else? Are you using their skills? Your members are gonna have a lot of different skills and things they bring to the table. So you wanna make sure that you're taking advantage of those and using them to make your club as best as it can be. Know you can build partnerships. So did you reach out to the other clubs and organizations in the area? Do you have plans to work together? Do you know the leaders of the Rotary Club or the Interact Club or the nonprofit club down the street? So just knowing what partnerships you have, are they willing to work with you? Are the local businesses in town gonna donate food to whatever event you're doing? Are they gonna promote your event for you? Are you gonna have them as a sponsor at something? Do you have partnerships? Know your success barriers. What obstacles exist and what prevent your events from being their best? So do you know that your club has transportation issues? Are all of your members employees that are working during the time you wanna have your activity? How are you planning to overcome these? Are you gonna set up a carpool? Are you gonna change the times of your projects so that more members can attend? And then finally, know how to keep it sustainable. Did you keep records of your project, including the key contact information? Will members three years from now know how to access this information and keep the projects going? The last thing you want is for all of your hard work to go to waste because it wasn't accessible for members to find in the future. So I think if you just keep all of these things in mind, you have no issues in making a successful project. And finally, um, feel free to contact me at any time with questions. My email is listed there. I know making projects, especially in a rural area, can seem tricky, but I promise it can be done. Um, as you'll see here, we have a lot of different organizations that we partnered with when I was in Rotaract at my university. And so all of this involved reaching out, calling nonprofits, saying, hey, what do you need? How can we help? And then we were able to do all of these great events. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm sure you're all gonna rock your projects in your rural areas. And so I can't wait to hear from you if you have any thoughts or questions. All right, have a great day.